Hey guys, and welcome back to Gwent, the Witcher card game. My name is Jagras, and today I'm rounding out my beginner deck series with a beginner Northern Realms deck, um, and that is this deck here. And this deck is actually a lot of fun to play. Uh, it's one of one of the more kind of interesting beginner decks in the kind of way that it works. Um, but this deck, you'll need a few extra cards for that you don't necessarily start with. So you're going to need three poor infantry. Poor infantry are common cards, so these shouldn't be too difficult to get. Uh, on top of that, you need an extra field medic. Um, field medic is a really useful card. You can resurrect a random bronze non permadeath unit with it. So these are just kind of nice to have anyway, and you get two for free, so you just need a third one. You also want three reinforced ballista. Now, if you don't have reinforced ballista, they are common, but if you don't have them, you can always sub in just regular ballista, which you get two of for free. Uh, which is uh, remove three strength from an opposing non-gold unit. Or if you happen to have some trebuchets, you could always put trebuchets in every three turns, remove two strength from a random opposing non-gold unit. However, the ballista are really fun because they remove one strength from a random opposing non-gold unit whenever a gold card appears on your side. And we have some interesting synergies with that, even though, you know, we only have this one gold card. Uh, the other things that you will need, if you don't already have them, is a second swallow potion. Uh, you just start with one. Three Thunderbolt Potions. Um, this is kind of key for this deck. This is kind of one of the more expensive elements, but it's it's really interesting, uh, which we'll get to in a second. And also an extra Promote. Convert all stances of a non-gold unit on your side of the battlefield to gold, which now you guys can maybe see the synergy with the Reinforced Ballistas. Because what you're basically going to do here is you want to summon up an infantry, and when you summon one infantry, it spawns two base copies of this unit on the same row. So then you have three infantry. Um, and then what you can do is you can spend time buffing those inf infantry, um, for example, with the Lightning Potion. Add four strength to all instances of a non-gold unit on its side. If it's a Witcher, add six strength instead. So basically, you can use the Thunderbolt Potion to buff up those three or, you know, six or nine infantry that you spawned. Uh, you've got Swallow Potion, which adds strength to a non-gold unit. And this is just a single unit. Um, but what this also does is it protects you from Scorch, because it means that all of your infantry don't have the same health. Uh, which means they can't all be removed by one, you know, one big scorch, for example. Um, you have your full test, your leader ability. Choose a bronze unit on the side of the battlefield, spawn an exact copy of it. So you can use this on a infantry you haven't buffed yet, and then buff all of those infantry with stuff like Thunderbolt Potion. Or you can do it on a buffed infantry and you get a second copy of it. And then it'll also spawn more infantry because it triggers the infantry effect. You see where we're going with this. Then, once you've got loads of infantry out, you can promote them. Uh, and they'll all turn into gold units. And the Northern Realms passive is that gold units gain two strength uh, when they appear on your side. So then they'd all gain two strength. Um, and then, you know, they lose this gold status when they are removed from the battlefield. However, you know, if you go on to the next round and they're removed from the battlefield, you can always resurrect them. And then because of the, uh, the them all turning gold, it will then cause your ballistas, if you have them out to fire, dealing one damage per per uh, gold card. So this is again, like um, you can see where the synergy the synergy in this deck comes from. I mean, we have uh, Geralt, which is standard, Geralt, sorry, uh, standard, uh, just because it's the only gold card that you start with. Similarly, prize winning cow. I mean, you guys all have seen him before. He's a one. And then when he dies or is removed from the battlefield, it spawns a chort, which has nine strength. So you want to play this round one or two. Now, normally each faction has a 10 strength free silver card, but in, uh, in Northern Realms, you actually get a six strength Silver card, but it removes four strength from an opposing non-gold unit. So the net change is 10 strength, um, but a little bit more interesting than some of the other 10 strength units that we've seen. Uh, and then we have Commander's Horn. You can use that to buff, you know, your zillions of infantry that you have. Scorch for removal uh, and the first light for just anti-weather effects, basically. Uh, but that's more or less it with the deck. I'm going to jump into a game now and try and showcase the deck uh, in action. And if you guys like this deck, do remember to hit that thumbs up button and maybe subscribe to the channel. Here's the better loot than in your wildest, wettest dreams. Close ranks. Okay, so we've matched up into Skelliger and Harold the Cripple. Harold is kind of annoying because what he can do is his ability is to remove two strength from all units on the board and three strength from all non-gold units, uh, which means that he can debuff our infantry quite successfully. Uh, in terms of our hand here, Commander's Horn is really good. You know, we've got two poor infantry, also really good. We've got Field Medic, which is nice, because then we can try and resurrect some infantry. And we've got two Promotes. And two Promotes is nice, but Promote really synergizes with the Ballista. So we're going to mulligan here to try and find the Ballista, uh, which we didn't get. On top of that, we have a uh, Swallow Potion and a Thunderbolt Potion. And I'm actually tempted to mulligan the th Swallow Potion just to try and find... Um, 
just to try and find a ballista. So let's do that. Redanian Knight. So we're going to mulligan the Redanian Knight as well. And we got double Thunderbolt Potion. So that's actually okay, all things told. Uh, we're going to open with the prize winning cow. Prize winning cow, you want to play on the, the first or second round, basically, because then you get the chalk for the second or third round. Uh, but this also gives us a little bit of time to see what sort of deck that he, this guy is running. And it looks like he's got a long ship out. So he may spend a load of time buffing this long ship and then try and resurrect it. Uh, that is definitely potential. Uh, we'll spawn some infantry out now. And there you can see the effect triggering where you get more infantry, basically. So what? Should I pound it into a poker? Yep, and we can see him already starting to buff up that long ship. Um, now, Skelliger, they gain points in the second and third rounds. Basically, all of their cards get stronger. So they're actually not looking to win this first round. Um, so, you know, uh, we don't need to go too aggressive here. I'm wondering whether it's worth, you know, uh, trying to maybe, you know, play quite aggressively and, and buff our units or whether we should hold off on this round because and then go hard on the second round. I think we'll play uh, Geralt for now. You know, he's nice and strong. And you can see there he got the Northern Realms buff of getting plus two because he is gold. So that's 14 strength out. Uh, Come on, quick now. As things currently stand, however, you can see he is just more or less buffing this uh, long ship. And the thing is, I don't really want to use promote strategies this round because we don't have any ballista. Uh, but what we could do is use the lightning potion and then, you know, that'll give us uh, 12 strength. But, and I mean, we could use Seal to, to Tarnsville, but there's nothing that... Tanserville, sorry, but there's nothing that we really want to remove, so we're better saving her. So I think for now we'll just Lightning Potion. Um, and that gives us a bunch of strength as well. And see what Harold gets up to. Out with the crowns. Come on, quick now. Right, you can see he's still buffing up this ship. And he's gonna he's definitely gonna try and resurrect it on the next turn. Um what we can do is we could duplicate our infantry, but it's not really worthwhile simply because we can get so many more infantry on the next turn. Uh this guy seems to want to continue to fight so what we're gonna do uh, is we're just gonna do some damage there to his his boat with the uh with the mage i want to win this round but i don't want to really play any more cards as things currently stand you know he's still kind of going in on it um we could lightning potion or, or toot this round um and that's actually not a bad plan because we can get you know we can get more units out on the next turn um so so perhaps what we'll just do is, is we'll just toot the front row it's annoying, but like it's it's easier to take the first round than it is to try and take the later rounds when he keeps resurrecting his units. This guy needs to calm down. So there's no point in promoting. There's no point in resurrecting. I guess we lightning potion. I don't, you know, I didn't want to play this heavily on the first round, but like we've been given no choice, you guys. Up and out of lazy mingers. And he's still going for it. It's fine. We're just going to full test. We get a 13 and then it spawns two more twos as well. Um, but that's gotten his, his leader power out, which is nice. And really surprised he went so heavily on this round. In all honesty. He's got 64. I mean, we're on 76. He needs 12 to beat us. At this point, we're going to pass. If he wants to keep playing his cards, he can. But we need something in reserve to play on the next round. Um, and considering he's just going to resurrect that boat, you know, that's definitely something that's uh, that's going to be a bit of a problem for us, I reckon. And he, he chose to draw, which is very interesting. You've got to assume he's got some resurrects in hand. Like, I don't think you would go that heavily on that round if you didn't have resurrects in hand. But you can see we got our uh, Redanian Knight out. Unfortunately, we didn't get, um, we didn't get our... Uh, Ballista, but you know we have a lot of strength at least, which is nice. No insult. And there's the resurrect that we saw coming. He's going to resurrect the longship. Why didn't he resurrect the longship? Maybe he has another resurrect. I'm really surprised he didn't. He must have another resurrect. But even if if you did, I would I would resurrect the longship on the off chance that I had a scorch or something and removed it. Anyway, it is what it is. Uh, let's play our field medic for now. And there you see our infantry, which then spawns more infantry, which is a nice, nice little synergy. We serve her who is virgin mother and crone. Yeah, there's the resurrect again. Hey, listen here, listen well. I'm very surprised by this strategy. Uh, we'll put another six on the board. Take it anymore. And those are actually nicely protected by the the, the field. Uh, sorry, the chore. I'm hoping he doesn't have lacerate in hand, but.
But if he does, you know, he does. And this is where the lightning potion would have been more effective, because we would have gotten, you know, uh, 24 strength out of it rather than 6. But I honestly didn't expect him to go that heavy on the first round because he was playing Skelliger. Uh, but it is what it is. There's a Demiratium bomb. I really don't know what his strategy is. So we'll promote those, and each of those gains two, um, which is a nice 12 strength there. And we have another 16 in hand. So I think, you know, even with his boat, do we still win? I think we still win. He's out of cards. We've got, yeah, we've got 16 in hand, so we do win this round. Um, so there's eight. Uh, he passes. And we're actually beating him by one here with a spare card in hand. But we'll pop out the Redanian at night there. And, you know, in all honesty, I think that... I think that he went too aggressive on the first round. Uh, and the fact that he tied it rather than drew meant that we got the win. Um, but you can kind of, you get familiar with certain kinds of deck. Like I knew that that was probably a, a boat buffing deck. Those are quite common. Um, and I think we played that pretty well. We'll jump into another game and I'll showcase this uh, this deck some more. I've had men killed for less. Onward, attack! Okay, so we've matched up into Radovid, and this is probably Radovid control. It's really common on the ladder, and it's a really horrible deck to play against. And honestly, our deck strategy doesn't go so well against it because of just how stuff like Yennefer works. Uh, in terms of the Mulligan, we don't need First Light. We've got Promote, we've got Infantries, we've got Medics, we've got two Ballistas, a Redanian Knight, and Prize-winning Cow. I'm actually going to Mulligan the Redanian Knight just to see if we can get, you know, more stuff that synergizes, uh, because obviously the... The infantry and the medic and the ballista all synergize quite nicely. Um, but yeah, all in all, I'm kind of happy with this hand. I mean, there's nothing that I really want to mulligan. I think, you know, we'll just we'll just accept what we have and uh, get on with the game. Right, what's he got? I I'm oh, expecting oh, oh, oh. Uh, Radovid Control. This is kind of standard. You play Temerian Foot Soldiers as a way to thin your deck, because when you play one, it plays all of them. Um, We'll put our cow out for now and just kind of see what he gets up to. Basically, we're, we're kind of stalling here a little bit just to see, you know, what it is that he plays. Uh, and there's the ballista. Um, we'll now get some uh, some poor infantry out. And this is actually quite nice because the chort is now protecting the poor infantry from, you know, danger, basically. Which is which is good. They would have put the bloody fuck here. Okay, Bloody Baron is horrible because it spawns a Lubberkin. And Lubberkin add three strength to a random other non-gold unit on the side at the start of each turn. So each turn he's getting three strength. Uh, we don't want to deal with that. So we can just use the damage from uh, CL or whatever her name is to just get rid of it. Though it's likely that he might resurrect it. As things currently stand, you know, we need four points to win. Uh, so I think we'll just... We'll... The problem here is we don't have four easily obtainable points. Um, I think what we'll do is play a Ballista, even though, you know, it would be nice to have both of them for the promote. We can just, we're just gonna have to play one to get the win, because none of these other cards are worth playing this turn. Um, Scorch will just hit our nine, so that's not good. And, uh, we get the win, which is nice. So at least we have a round at this point, you know, we've won one round. Um, and having won one round, you know, you still get progress towards your daily quest. So, you know, if you, if you get a matchup like this, where it's not usually particularly fun... You know, don't feel too bad. Uh, I'm going to open with the Redanian Knight. Because this, you know, it's eight strength, whereas these are only two. So it does, it does, you know, no shield. It does shield the, uh, it does shield the uh, poor infantry. We'll then play our field medic. Like and we got lucky and got a uh, infantry. I mean, you're quite likely to get infantry because of how, uh, how many of them are in the graveyard. You know, there, there's, there's a lot of them in there. So it's, it's likely to happen. Uh, he's got Ockfist. After how many turns is this? Four turns, remove one strength from all opposing non-gold units, then Ockfist returns to your hand. This is annoying, but it's non-gold units, and we've got four turns. So what we're going to do is get our infantry out. But if we get our infantry out and then promote them, we can't Lightning Potion. So we've got to kind of work this out how many turns we'll have, basically. Crush those vermin. So let's get some more infantry out. I mean, we have, like I say, we have four Don't turns. So this match. should be okay, and the fact that we've got promote in hand is going to, like I say, protect them. This is actually also fine. Uh, Yennefer removes one strength from the strongest opposing non-gold units, but our strongest unit currently is the knight, so this is good. Because like um, the knight is currently protecting the uh, currently protecting the poor infantry. We're then going to lightning potion and then promote. I think is the plan. 
Alternatively, we reinforce Ballista and then promote. Okay, this is problematic because now Yennefer would target these guys, which was the plan. Um, I think what we're going to do, yep, is just pop out that Ballista there, which is now the target for Yennefer. Uh, which does, like I say, protect our, our units a little bit. And he'll think, you know, everything's going to have, you know, strength removed. But in actual fact, you know, with this, with the promote, we're going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 damage. Uh, unfortunately, it means we can't lightning potion, oh, which would have been nice. But it is what it is, you know. Uh, and that actually is unfortunate because now we can't, we can't just scorch this and remove it. The, I mean, the alternative is we take the one strength loss on all of the all of these guys. Yeah, it's tempting. I think we do it. I think we we're gonna take the strength loss so that we can play the. Uh, the lightning potions. Although they are all going to take one damage from Yennefer, and that's okay. Honestly, it's fine. Let's just hope he doesn't have Igni. Not a bad idea. I think we have to be very careful here because you know these are now the strongest units on our side of the board, which means if he does have Igni, we're going to be in a really awkward position. I'm assuming he's resurrecting the Lubberkin. Yeah, he did. Um, the other thing is we'll open ourselves up to Scorch if we do Lightning Potion them again. Oh, I don't know. It's a risky strategy. Does he have Scorch in hand? I mean, I do think that Radovid Control runs Scorch. Promote will give us plus two on each of them. But then we don't have much in hand for the next chapter. So we get 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. We get 18 strengths from the promote. You know what? I'm going to I'm gonna play risky. I think we play risky. And we just lightning potion again. They're all going to take one damage here. Uh, and we just have to hope that... Actually, he can't scorch us because of the one damage from Yennefer. It has actually meant that the Reaver Hunters... Um, has meant that the Reaver Hunters uh, are actually protecting me from scorch. So it's, the only risk we have here is Igni. And you know, if he has Igni, he'll play it. If he doesn't have Igni... It's good. He played Octavist. And this is where we promote. And these are now all protected from the Yennefer. Boom. Uh, and look how much strength we got there. Plus the Ballista firing and doing a lot of damage to him. We're now, we're now well ahead of him. And because these are promoted, they can't be hit by the Scorch. Which means we can now use the Scorch to uh, damage his Reaver Hunter and remove 10 strength from him. So, you know, let's, let's probably do that. I mean, if he can catch us... With the cards that he has, he can catch us with the cards that he has, you know? There's not a lot we can do about that. But as it is, he's on 41. And we are on, uh... We are on 84. I mean, we're gonna lose one strength each turn, and Radovid can actually target one of our infantry. To the dungeon. He hasn't died, though, which is nice. And we'll just have to wait and see what he has. I mean, we're losing one strength, and he's gaining three per turn, so each turn, you know, that he's gaining four, effectively. Uh, but it just depends on what he has in hand. I think we've, like, played this as well as we could. Uh, and I think taking the risk with the Lightning Potion was the right decision. Okay, so Villain Trendmouth, after three turns, destroyed the strongest non-god unit twice in a row. I mean, he can play this fine now because, you know, it, it, it won't trigger because he's only got one card left. Um, but as it is, we win! Look at that! And uh, that just goes to show you guys, you know, he had Villain Trendmouth, he had uh, Yennefer, he had, you know, uh, what's his name? The guy who plays the Lubberkin, uh, Bloody Baron, for example. You know, we had uh, we had beginner decks, and you can still beat Radovid Control. And Radovid Control is probably the most commonly played deck um, on the ladder at the moment. And this, I think, just goes to show you that uh, one of the big things about Gwent and being good at Gwent is understanding what your opponent is going to play. Because you'll see in the first game and in the second game, I kind of knew the strategies. And that's just something where, like, even if you don't want to play the deck itself, like, maybe even if you don't want to play this infantry deck, for example, being familiar with it and how it's played is quite useful. Just because then, you know, you can kind of think about what the opponent might do. Um, and actually, that worked out really, you know, really nicely for us. Which is awesome. And as it was, he didn't have Igneo Scorch and I had nothing to worry about. Um... But yeah, that's more or less it from me and the uh, the Northern Realms deck. I mean, there's not an awful lot you can do to change this deck. I'm just trying to think how I would change it, um, you know, if I was going to adjust things. I think at, like, higher levels of Northern Realms, you can do kind of different things. Like, you'd play Radovid Control, for example. Um, definitely, you know, maybe teching it in with some, some more gold cards can be nice. 
Uh, but actually, I think it's, you know, pretty strong as it is. You know, Triss is nice to you, removes four strength from a unit, so that can give you options if your opponent plays something that you don't like. Uh, Shani is really good, because you can use Shani to resurrect your, uh, uh, resurrect your, uh, uh, poor infantry, for example, so having extra options for resurrection can be good. Um, but yeah, that's, that's more or less it for the deck. Um, but if you've liked this video, do hit that thumbs up button, guys, and remember to subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can find me, uh, live streaming, Gwent, and, uh, Sonic Tactics at twitch.tv forward slash Jagger. So if you want to see me live, that's an option. Um, beyond that, let me know what you want to see from the next deck in the comments below. Uh, what you kind of want to see from the channel. And I hopefully I'll catch you guys next time. If not, you can always follow me on Twitter at Jaggers. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye.